Good morning, everybody. Good morning and welcome to the Isn't It Time Facebook Live show today on this glorious morning where I am. Today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite topics of all time and the one whenever I uh, do a speaking engagement on this particular topic, it actually, you can hear a pin drop in the room. You know, it's one of those ones that um, I think for many of us, we can feel it, but we actually don't know how to express it. And it can show up in the absolute strangest of ways. Good morning, Jen. Morning, Elle. <laughs> you guys are right on this morning. Let me know what it's like where you are today. We here on the Gold Coast have a little splash of spring today, but it's going to end all tomorrow, of course. But uh, it's absolutely uh, glorious. So let me know where you are and what it's like where you are today. And uh, um, we'll check in. See, a weekend yet again. I just realized it's about um, mid-August, aren't we? Right in the middle of August. Isn't that incredible? Morning, Debbie. Love to see you here. All righty. We are going to be talking about the imposter syndrome. Now, I'm actually, no, I've done this before. I've talked about this. Uh, rain, rain, rain. Jen, not again. Is that right? Oh. Yeah, good morning, Donna. Yeah, Brisbane is absolutely beautiful. Rain in Melbourne again. Oh, my gosh. Oh, cold in Inverell. I'll bet. I'm actually going to Melbourne uh, in two weeks. So Melbourne's got two weeks to get its act together. <laughs> I'm actually flying down after a uh, speaking gig here. I'm jumping on a plane and flying down uh, just to spend uh, uh, Father's Day with my father. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, I'm going to pack a coat and boots and something else. <laughs> Jen, I'm, I'm relying on you, Jen. <laughs> it's got to be nice when I go. Oh, you know, I think we just our blood things out or something. All right, we're going to talk about the imposter syndrome. So as I go through each of these, now, as I said before, I have talked about this before, but um, uh, I've only kind of skimmed the surface of it um, as part of a bigger show on self-sabotage. So I thought today what I'd do is really kind of drill down into this because um, this imposter syndrome is something that impacts many people. Uh, in fact, I was reading yesterday a heap of, uh, of celebrities um, uh, experience it. Um, as I said in the in the lead up to this, um, Oprah's talked about it, Jane Fonda's talked about it, Michelle Obama's talked about it, Hillary Clinton, Brene Brown. You know, so it's not just something that happens to us um, mere mortals. Um, it, and it appears to be, when I'm looking at the research on it, it appears to be as you kind of go up, as you want to elevate yourself to the next level, that's when it comes up. So we're going to drill down into it today. And just when you kind of go on, aha, I've got this, let me know. Let me know if this kind of relates to you. So we're going to look at the five aspects of the self, uh, of the imposter syndrome. We're going to talk about how it can sabotage uh, your goals and aspirations in really strange ways, how it just it just comes up and you don't really know what it is until you can dig a bit deeper. Then we're going to look at, at what we call stereotype threat, um, which is a really interesting concept I came across this week. I, um, I'm doing some research for a, a women in leadership uh, keynote presentation I'm doing in New Zealand in a couple of weeks and I came across this. I, I, the more I looked at it, the more it really made sense to me. And, of course, we're going to talk about how you can take steps to recognise and overcome it. We're going to finish with a tapping uh, round at the end. And of course, we, we're going to try and finish right on 8 o'clock. So, um, well, lots to pack in the show today. All right. So we're going to talk about the five aspects of the imposter syndrome. Um, and let's talk about the first one, number one. And the first aspect of the imposter syndrome is the perfectionist. Now, the perfectionist uh, and the imposter syndrome go hand in hand because they usually set excessively high goals for themselves. So uh, a perfectionist will set a goal almost that's unattainable. And it's a way of um, holding yourself back and not stepping in uh, to your true self. You know, everything's got to be perfect. If it's not perfect, huh? hi, Deb, got your back. Um they're not perfect. We've had some funny internet stuff here this week too. So hopefully it'll, it'll be okay. Um, so ask yourself these questions. I've, I've written help down, heap down. Um, so if you're a perfectionist, ask yourself, have you ever been accused of being a micromanager? 
Uh, are you the type of person that needs to have control over everything? Do you have trouble delegating? Um, and do you and do you kind of um, feel that your work has to be a hundred percent perfect before you can move forward? Now, how this will hold yourself back? So. Uh, for many of you I know that are in direct selling or network marketing, you might hold yourself back until you know 100% about everything, uh, about any of your products. You might um, hold yourself back because you don't feel that you've got your your um, your spiel, you know, the, the way you can approach people down perfectly. Um, in your business, in, in, in management, you might... Um, be really holding back until you feel everything's perfect. You're not ready to move or shift your your team forward. Um, and oftentimes you have difficulty delegating because you, people don't do things as well as you do. So uh, the perfectionist's great fear really is that you're not enough, that you're never good enough, you're never going to be good enough. And so we tend to push that out on others. Now, how that shows up, in a way is that we just won't, uh, even though we've got the high goals, we'll write the whole high goals down, we just will find ways not to do it. Um, we'll come up with all sorts of excuses. It's not perfect yet. It's not right. I haven't got all the um, things in a row, ducks in a row. You start to get cranky with other people because they're not doing things right. You know, you'll do things like say, oh, give it to me. Just give it to me. Let me do it. You know, I, I often used to, I know myself a little bit of this, you know, when, when the kids wouldn't clean their rooms properly. <laughs> I learned after a while, didn't matter. But there was that thing, you know, how can I get on to do my thing um, when I have to be focused on everybody else because they don't do their things right. So the perfectionist is looking is a, is a way that stops you from truly shining um, because it's, everything's not just quite right yet. The second aspect of the um, imposter syndrome is the superwoman or superman. Um, and this was, uh, for me, was my biggest issue. Um, I would work harder and, and uh, take on more tasks than other people. I get stressed when I wasn't working. I found, you know, I, I found down, down, time, down time a waste of time. You, you know, I always had to be doing something. Um, feel like I haven't, well, this is for me. Felt like I hadn't earned my title. So I would take on more and more tasks to kind of make myself worthy. And that's what it comes down to. It's about feeling worthy and valuable. Um, and I found it, I think for a superwoman, we, we get, and man, is we're very, very um, sensitive to criticism because we can feel ourselves working really hard um, and then because we take on so much we tend to then um, let things slip you just can't keep everything going so we get really cranky with people who criticize us start arguments um, and it's really about our, our, our own self-worth and self-value um, we're a bit of workaholics the um, the superman superwoman um, I know, um, you know, start work at 7, 7.30, not finish till, you know, 6 o'clock at night. I think that that was okay. Mastering it, holding all the balls in the air. Um, the natural genius, that's number three. Now, the natural genius, um, they're the person that's often told you're the smart one in the family. Uh, the natural genius is the one that often walked off the stage at school with all the awards. But they set their internal bar impossibly high um, little like the perfectionists they have very high expectations um, and they it often for a natural genius they have a high need to please the accolades are the things that really keep them um, feeling like they're doing the right thing um, they they if they have a setback their confidence will be shattered quite a lot um, I know I have um, my, my daughter's a bit like this and if she has a setback, it'll take her a while to kind of gear up again. Um, and she won't, I know many natural geniuses, won't attempt things until they know it 100%. They have to know it because they just don't like to make a mistake because they've always won the awards. They usually, a natural genius is the one that works really hard on something um, because I don't want to, you know, fail in any way. So 
Um, and this is, um, you know, again, as I said, it's about needing to please and feeling the acknowledgement. So um, the natural genius often just um, won't attempt things, you know, hold themselves back all the time until they've got it perfect and use enormous amounts of stress and anxiety. Anything uh, resonating with you guys at the moment? We've got in the top three. We've got a perfectionist, superwoman, natural genius. Let me know. Let me know if any of these are just resonating with you at the moment or you know other people like this. Um, you can often see it in others. The next one is uh, number four is the rugged individualist. Now, these are the people um, who will never ask for help. Um, they pretend that they've got everything um uh, uh, covered uh, internally they're just you know running on a treadmill almost but they feel that if I you know they'll often say the words I don't need anybody's help I can do this all by myself another one absolutely more than one <laughs> I know and you know what I think L is we go in and out of them too and um, depending on certain circumstances the rugged individual is very independent person um, again I have a daughter another daughter like this extremely independent and um and, you know, sees that asking for help is a sign of weakness. So we'll often mull over things, you know, for a long time, a little bit of everything. Yeah, 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 Jen. Um, so I don't need anybody's help. So um, it, it really is about being caught out, feeling that perhaps I'm not as smart as what I think I am or they're going to think I'm not as smart as what I think of am. And so we take that on board uh, big time. And, you know, really... The ability to ask for help is such is such a strength, really. It's it's a it's a it's a way that you're placing your vulnerability out there um, to allow you to do far greater things. And the third, the last one, number five, and I used to work with somebody like this. This is an expert, and the expert is the one that's always doing course after course. Um, they they feel that they kind of <laughs> they've kind of tricked their way into where they are now, and they never know enough. Um, and as I mentioned last week, um, this man I used to work for had done a number of bachelor's degrees, a couple of master's degrees, including an MBA, and was doing his PhD. And still, it's still you can feel that kind of never knowing enough. So the difference between knowledge, you know, continually learning, that's different. But when it dominates, um, it dominates your um, ability to step up and out. Um, I don't know enough about that yet. I've got to do another course. Um I actually used to see this a lot in, in training EFT uh, practitioners is that they, would re they wouldn't they would allow themselves just to jump in and learn as they went along and trust in their own intuition, feeling they had to know everything. You know, I've got to do more courses, I've got to learn more, read more. As I said, nothing wrong with that. Lifelong learning is great. But when it stops you from stepping in because, you know, business or, and life are pretty messy. Uh, there's no straight path and we learn as we do things. So um, the expert is usually about being caught out that you are not who you think you are and, and you'll be seen in some way different. This can often come from having kind of very um, domineering parents who never let you make your own mistakes um, and who, who you know, were constantly kind of challenging you about what you needed to do, who you were going. So have a look around that um, and let me know about the rugged individualist um, and see if some of these are actually holding you back because, I mean, that's really what it's all about. Do you know, essentially, I just finished reading um, Emma Isaac's book, uh, Winging It. I had, And if you don't know who Emma Isaacs is, she is the um, CEO of Business Chicks. And it was one of those things that always held myself back from kind of going into. I didn't like the name. It's now Australia. Uh, one of Australia's largest networking organisations for women. Incredible. Her story is amazing. Uh, she's an amazing woman. But um, even after all she's done uh, and opening up her business uh, in now in the US as well um, with, with uh, you know, her, her, you know, she runs numerous businesses actually, she still has those days where she said, I, I just, maybe I'm going to get caught out. Maybe this is, maybe... I'm going, she talks about it all the time. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. Maybe I'm going to, maybe I don't know enough. And she uses that terminology, we're all winging it. Because we are, really, aren't we? We're all winging it. No one, there's no, there's no certainty in anything. And as I mentioned last week, you know, um, that's part of the, the thing about speaking your truth authentically. 
having the courage to speak your truth authentically, and I think this is about the imposter syndrome as well, it's about having courage, compassion for your, your beautiful self, as Joe Dispenza always says, and um, having that commitment to uncertainty because you know, we're going to make mistakes. We learn from them. We tell our kids that all the time, don't we? Tell our kids all the time, you're going to learn from mistakes. Just get in and do it. Have a go. Have a go. That great Australian saying, have a go. So let's look at the way that this kind of sabotages uh, your goals in mysterious ways. As I mentioned with the perfectionist, number one, you turn that blame on everybody else. You'll get cranky with people. Um, number In number two, in the superwoman, you don't like criticism. So um, you'll, you'll get all huffy and puffy and, you know, who do they think they are? And, and it can hold you back a lot when you can't take criticism. But it's only because... You feel like you're doing so much. And if someone comes along or criticizes you, it's like, oh, God, am I not enough? I'm not, aren't I doing enough? Um, the rugged individuals will always hold themselves back, always, 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 because they just won't ask for help. And oftentimes that will happen when they won't reach out when they're really stressed. Yeah, that's right, Sandy. I don't have chronic patients. I have life experience. We do. We bring an enormous life experience uh to what we do and um and that should never be undervalued that to me i think is where we as women uh, really have the upper hand in this because we have an enormous amount of wisdom and sometimes we don't acknowledge that we've we've learned the wisdom we have the lines in our face to prove it and um that's you know that life experience is just so powerful we and to own that is really really important um, so the natural genius, they will hold themselves back. Again, they'll create great anxiety for themselves. Um, and they'll say things like, um, I'm too anxious. I, I, I'm going to have an anxiety attack. I'm, I can't do this. You know, they hold themselves back by kind of not um, stepping into the, in the fray. And, of course, the expert, the expert will continually just sabotage themselves all the time. You know, I don't know enough about that yet. I don't know if I, I can't do that yet. No, no, I need to know more without, as Sandy just said, really tapping into that um, into that natural wisdom that you have and feeling the fear and doing it anyway. Feeling the fear and doing it anyway. I want to talk a little bit about um, this concept I came across this week called stereotype threat, um, which is really interesting and how it relates to us as women in particular uh, in stepping into leadership roles. Stereotype threat uh, was based on a study done um, in the late 1970s and early 80s where they found when they separated um, uh, kids based on race, on the race, so for instance, black students and white students, and they told black students that um, black kids aren't good at maths or black kids aren't good in English, um, and then they didn't say it to another group <laughs> oh, Deb. oh, good. Uh, then they didn't tell it to other groups. The performance by the kids who were told their stereotype, blacks don't do well on particular um, subjects, did poorly, more poorly, than the, than the kids who weren't told that. And what the research has shown is that women who were told they're not good at leadership or sales or maths will perform worse than those who are not told that, who are not told that stereotype. So sometimes we can buy into this stereotype of not being good enough at sales, for instance. Women aren't good at sales or women aren't good at leadership or women are too emotional in leadership. When we buy into that, what happens is we actually become um, more of that. So if we're told... Uh, oh, women aren't good at leadership, you know, they become more emotional. And we try really hard not to be emotional. We actually <laughs> reverse <laughs> and become more emotional. We become more of whatever the stereotype is. So have a think about to this week, no matter how much you try, how much you are playing out this stereotype threat in your business in particular. You know, if you, if you have a belief that women aren't good at sales, women aren't, aren't good at leadership, and it's all coming to me because of this leadership. Ah, just stay out of it. Don't get involved. Hmm, isn't that interesting, Sandy? And so, of course, how does that work for you? 
Um, now when you Sandy, how does that work for you? <laughs> Staying out of it. <laughs> oh, that's really hard. I know that's really hard for me. So yeah, and so it's, it, and what happens is the serial type threat increases our anxiety and stress trying not to be like that. And of course, what happens is flight, fight and freeze response. The stress response become more like it. Interesting stuff. So just look at somewhere where you, uh -huh, uh, maybe you are playing out a stereotype that you don't want to play out. What were you told um, about what you could do as a girl, for instance, uh, when you were going to school? Um, I was told I was never going to, in our family, for instance, we're not good at maths. Guess, so guess what? We're not good at maths. And yet, interestingly enough, all of us, all of our, all, all my um, four sisters and a brother in our family, every single one of us have had children who are good at maths. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? We were just, I was just correlating that this week. We, we, none of, we all believed we weren't good at maths, and yet we raised children who were. Mm, interesting. So check around that. Check around the stereotype. All righty. We are going to, of course, uh, let me know one, two, three, or five. One, two, three, four, or five. See, I'm not good at maths. I told you that. <laughs> uh, one, two, three, four, or five. Which one are you? Perfectionist? Most. Most. Okay. Perfectionist. Superwoman. Number two. Natural genius. Number three. That's right, Donna. I was not hear the words. Uh, rugged individuals, number four, or number five, the expert. Which are you, or are you a combination of all? Let me tell. Let me know. Put 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 a, a one, two, three, four, or five in the comments. I'd love to know what we have most of on the call today. I am number two, mostly a recovering superwoman. I must say, I'm just high to VA today. I've got my cleaning lady now coming once a week. I'm learning to hang over. I'll learn the hang of it. Perfection is done. Beautiful, beautiful. And superwoman, mm -hmm. and you, you know, because I oh number five, Deb. Ah, that's interesting. The expert. Oh, ah, yes, 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 yes. I can see that with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can. Mm, interesting. Yeah. No. So now it's look. So now what you do, kind of this week. This is all about acknowledging it, right? So when you acknowledge it, then you go, okay, I'm doing this why it's so hard because i'm generally all five <laughs> yeah jen i think we do you know i think that's what happens i think we become um we, we take it on we take on many of them i'm getting told too although i got called wonder woman the other day <laughs> You are Wonder Woman. Um, two, yeah, I'd see you, I see you that as Sandy. I see you as that. I see you, Superwoman Sandy, I think deep down. Um, yeah, Jen, I think I think um it's it's this whole thing about never feeling we are enough. That's what it comes down to, really. We never feel we're enough. So as I said before, this is about acknowledging it. Okay, I'm slipping into this. And um, as I said, acknowledge. So today, this week, hi to VA. My clean ladies are coming twice a week. Uh, twice a week. I love it. Come twice a week. Uh, twice, once a week. Um, number two, one. Mm. Yeah, yeah, L. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I can see that too, you know, and having, having all those boys, <laughs> your family, you know, sometimes not being able to pass it on, I would think too. Um, yeah, so um, um, look at ways that your particular type can get over. It. For instance, let's go with the perfectionist. You know, I, what is the greatest fear you have with perfectionism? What, what would it be for you? Is it control? Uh, is it having to have everything just right because then I know who I am? <laughs> then I know who I am. Uh, just just check around that um, because all of these are usually fear of something, and that keeps you um, keeps you there. Um, all right, we're going to do a tapping thing. We're going to tapping. We're going to tap. So. Um, let's look at choosing number one of yours, whatever it is, even though I am a perfectionist, even though I am a superwoman. 
Okay. Um, and I want you to think of how strong that is for you. Okay. How strong that is for you. I'm going to go with Superwoman for me. That's going to be mine. I want to see, I want to check myself if I kind of let go of some of that. Oh, L, interesting. Not having everything just right and the disappointment to others. Hmm, interesting. That's a really good, uh huh. Yeah, I'd work on that this week, L. Have a look what's going on there. Okay. Um, all right, let's do a tapping session. Um, here we go. I'm going to do super one. Measure on a scale of one to 10, how strong you think this is for you. Perfectionist, superwoman, natural genius. Uh, what's the other one? Rugged individualist and expert, which is the strongest for you. Mm. It's good, isn't it, Sandy? Good, aha. Uh -huh. All right, here we go. Write it down. Now, you're going to go looking now for incidences in your past where this has kept you safe, where you felt if you were like this, uh, you were safe, you were happier. Okay, here we go. I just said, aha, come in for me then. Even though I find myself sometimes taking on way too much and that feeling like a superwoman. I deeply and completely accept myself and how I feel. Even though I feel this aspect of the imposter syndrome is holding me back from something. What is my greatest fear? I deeply and completely accept myself and how I feel. Even though I know this aspect of the imposter syndrome really holds me back. But I'm ready to release it. I deeply and completely accept myself and how I feel. Okay, here we go. It holds me back. I can feel the fear. What am I hiding? What am I most fearful of? What would feel like to let this go? This doubt and fear. Sometimes it's so hard to let this go. What am I most fearful of? This fear and doubt makes me feel like I'm an imposter. This fear and doubt, it's holding me back. What am I most fearful of? This fear and doubt. Am I enough? This fear and doubt. And take a deep breath and let it go. Okay, so this week, it's all about um, catching yourself. Catching yourself when you know. <laughs> Thanks, Kim. Just back you run. Oh, that's cool. What a gorgeous morning to run too. What a beautiful morning to exercise. Ah, so glorious this morning. Um, so this week, it's about becoming very mindful of it. It's about, you know, um, when you're aware of it, you can catch yourself. So if you're struggling with this, um, I've got some dates in my diary this week. Actually, only one or two because it's been is anybody else, let me just ask you this question. Has anybody else noticed that time feels like it is speeding up big time? 
wow, I don't know what's going on, but this week was just amazing. So um, I only have a few spots left. So if you um, are really stuck on this and you know it's holding you back, if you know it's holding you back, um, click in. Let's have a 20-minute chat. Let's see um, if and how I can help you um, identify it, see what's holding you back so you can move forward and be your most brilliant self. So let's create quickly before we finish, let's create some I am statements out of this. Okay, let's do a very quick tapping around. I won't do a, 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 a side of the hand tapping. Let's go straight to it. Okay. I just want to just do, and I want you to pull out your own I am statements out of this. Remember the words follow I am, follow you. Okay. I choose to understand what's going on. I am enough. I am worthy. I choose to understand what drives this imposter syndrome. I am enough. I am doing the best I can. I am enough. I choose to understand what's going on. Let's do another quick round. I am enough. I choose to believe I am enough. I am enough. I choose to forgive myself for not seeing that. I am worthy and valuable. I am enough. I choose to be kind and compassionate to my beautiful self. I am enough. Okay, take a breath. Now, with those I am statements, remember, you got to say them. <laughs> don't, don't just do it once. Write it down. Put it in your diary. Put it in your journaling every morning. I am enough. I am enough. How would life be for you if you truly and honestly believed you were enough? Just who you were. What difference would it make? All right, my lovely, brilliant people. Thank you for being on this morning. Um, feel free to reach out and have a chat if you want. Let me know how you go. Um, and I wish you a beautiful week um, this week. And if you get some ahas, shoot me a, 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 um, a, a message and let me know because I'd love to know. I love to know when you get the ahas because that's what really this is all about. It's about just being enough. You're welcome, Elle. Lovely to have you on again. Stay warm in Inverell. Ooh. Welcome, Deb. Thanks for being on again. Love to see you every morning. Thank you, everybody, for um, jumping on each week. I love having you here. And uh, have a wonderful, wonderful week. I shall see you next Saturday at 7.30. Bye for now.